All right, today I want to check out this background on frame1.ch. Thank you to one of my followers, Anish, who asked how to do this. So we're going to code it up in P5.js, and I'm not going to focus on how to get into Webflow. I already have videos on that, but I will leave a link in the description with a full clonable for you to check out. Anyways, let's hop into the code. Hey there, Webbay. All right, so this is a basic P5 setup. We have our setup and draw functions. Now I'm going to just create a canvas that is the width of the window and the window height as well. Uh, just like to start by doing that. And then the background, we'll just set it to be black. Now I wanna make a class and I'm gonna call that dot. And we just use our open close squiggly brackets here and the dot needs a constructor function. And what we're gonna do inside of the constructor is we're, so we wanna pass our dot a value um, X, Y, and size. So X and Y, of course, are the coordinates in the space, and the size will be the size of the dot. And I'll make them a little bit bigger here. I think they're pretty small on the Frame 1 website, but I think it'll be easier to see if I make them bigger here. Anyways, so within our constructor, we'll set the local instance of the variables um, that I'm calling these to this dot X equals X, this dot Y equals Y, oops, uh, semicolon, and this dot size equal to size. And now our dot is going to have an update function, and this is going to handle the logic of what happens to our dot every uh, time that the draw function is called. You'll see we call it in there. Let me collapse this. And then we'll also create a render function within our dot class, and that's just going to draw a circle by using p5.js's elip function. And we'll draw it at this dot x, this dot y, and this dot size. So I want my size, I don't really care, like, I'm going to just set it as a constant up here just so that like anything that I want the user to be able to edit. So when you go into this, it's everything's at the top. You can just edit it all there. Anyways, we'll set dot size to something like five for now. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and get something on the screen. So we're going to say let D equal new dot. And remember, it needs an X, a Y and a size. So we'll just give it 10, 10 and dot size. And now we need to actually call the render function on that. So we do that. And if I hit play, you can see it's still small. I said we're going to make it bigger, but it's pretty small right there. Anyways, once I get a bunch on the screen, it'll look great. So let's get a bunch on the screen. Now I'm going to create a variable called dots, and I'm going to set it equal to an empty array. And within our setup function, we're going to define a bunch of dots to take up the whole grid. And to do that, we're going to use nested for loops. Again, I have a plenty of videos that kind of walk through this a little bit more in detail, but essentially what we're doing is we're gonna loop from the from zero to the width and from zero to the height and draw a dot at each little coordinate cell. So we're gonna go i less than width, <clears throat> and we're gonna say i plus equals, now we need some sort of spacing value, so I'm gonna say spacing, though we haven't defined it yet, uh, but we'll do that right after this. Let j equal to zero, and j is less than the height, and j plus equals spacing as well. How's my spacing there? Open and close curly brackets there. So we have our nested for loop. And let's go ahead and define our spacing up here. Uh, we'll set it to like based on the dot size, but you could set it to whatever you want. And let's say it is dot size times two. Now we're going to, let's say, let dot equal new dot. So we're just kind of actually taking this from up here and moving it into the setup function. So we only need to do it once. And we will draw that at i, j, and dot size. So we've got our dot, and then we'll say dots dot push. This is how we add a dot to the array. And we will push that dot. Now within our draw function, we need to update for having multiple dots instead of one. So we'll call our dots variable, and that has a function called for each on it. And for each also has a function to run on each dot. So we're going to run that function inside here. We'll call dot dot render. And I think we should be able to play now and we get a bunch of dots on the screen. That's cool. Now, I never like these dots like being on the edge like this. So let's go ahead and just shift these over by spacing divide by two. And we'll add spacing divide by two in our coordinates there. So now we've got a little bit better padding on the sides. So I think that's great. Let's also let our dots know about their transparency because this is what we're going to work on editing now. So transparency equal to, you could like, we'll say uh, min tr minimum transparency. I'm just gonna hard code it here. I don't got the time to type that all out. Anyways, uh, within the render function, we'll set our fill to 255, which is a value of white, and then we can pass an opacity value anywhere from zero to 255 as well. For now, we'll just pass this dot transparency, 
And if I hit play, then you should see we have some kind of darker dots here because they are transparent at a level of 40. Okay, now let's work on what we're gonna put in our update function. Now we wanna have a look at the mouse coordinate here and kind of look at like, is it within an area of effect? And if it is, then we wanna color it white. So let's, uh, let's set up a conditional, but before we do that, we need to actually calculate the distance. So we'll make a variable called distance. And P5 has this dist function that we can calculate the distance between two points. I'm gonna calculate the distance between mouse X, mouse Y, and this dot X and this dot Y. And so we'll say if distance, distance is less than some value, maybe 50, then we want to set this trans, this dot transparency equal to 255, so white. And otherwise, we want to set this dot transparency equal to a maximum value. And the max function takes two values here, and that's going to be the maximum value of 40. Again, so we should probably store this in a variable, right? Uh, and this dot transparency minus uh, 10, I guess. So let's go ahead and define our min t value equal to 40 up here. And we'll copy that and just bring it down here where we have 40 twice. Boom and boom. Okay, and let's play. And now I am not getting anything because I have not actually called the update function. So let's dot dot update here and play. And great, now I get this kind of trailing dot, which is pretty cool. The last thing we want to do is that we actually want this to completely fade away if we come back. Like, okay, we're seeing it light up, but then if I just am not moving the mouse, then it completely fades away. So we need a way to check that the mouse is moving. And P5 comes with a function, so right below the draw function, called mouse moved that does exactly that. So this will fire when the mouse is moved. Now let's go ahead and um, we need some sort of global variable. We'll say is mouse moved. This will be a Boolean and we'll start it equal to false. And when mouse is moved, we will set is mouse moved equal to true. And we basically want to be turning this mouse moved off all the time. So we can use a set timeout function to do that. And the set timeout function takes a function itself. So we'll just use that. And then a time value, we'll say 100 milliseconds. So just like that. And right within our function, we're gonna set is mouse moved equal to false. So basically what this is doing is it's trying to set our is mouse moved variable to false unless the mouse is actually moved, then it's going to set it to true. But now we need to actually look at our is mouse moved variable within our update function. So we have if distance is less than 50, and you know, I kind of want to extract that too, but let's finish this out. I'll just paste is mouse moved and the distance is less than 50. I'm not sure why it put a period there. Then we want to set our transparency. So let me play. And now I can see that when I stop moving, the circle is fading away. Great. So, I mean, we've pretty much finished. Let's just go ahead and extract this 50 value out. We'll call a const, oops, why did we go down there? We will say const area of effect equals 50. And let me just copy paste this so that it is down here. Paste, boom, and there you have it. So that completes the build. I hope this code kind of helped you create something cool. There's a lot of ways you could alter it to make it fun. And again, if you want the full clonable in Webflow, I'll drop that in the description. The way they use it on frame one is as a fixed kind of um, background that works there so that it, it kind of follows with you throughout the whole page. So I've done this before. I don't want to repeat all of that. Anyways, if you like it, you got to be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.